Hi guys, and welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today I have the treatest of all treats. Today I am going to be reviewing Boosh, Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castell, book four and the final book in the Great Coats series. First of all, before before I even talk about it, yes, I read it a little bit before November. I wasn't. I read it in the last weekend of, of of October, even though I was supposed to wait till November. But October was a difficult reading month for me. I spoke to my jailers, and since I was reading Akatar, and that Akatar vlog is incoming, and I know you guys are so excited, and it'll be the most viewed most viewed video on my channel of me hating me hating Akatar. So that's coming, but since, since I was doing all that, I was, I was permitted to read Tyrant's Throne a little early. And guys, I, j j just buckle your seatbelts and get ready, because guys, I loved this book. I liked this book so much, guys. Tyrant's Throne may be my favorite book of 2020, my favorite book of the year. It's certainly one of my favorite books uh, ever now, and, and it really puts the Great Coat series as if not my favorite series of all time, then right up there at the top. I could not have loved this book more. So guys, I'm not gonna spoil anything for Tyrant's Throne, but just by nature of talking about the fourth book in a series, there's probably gonna be stuff that, you know, is light or big spoilers for the first three books. So just be warned, um, stuff from the other three books may come up in this review. So book four, guys, starts with a bang. Uh, everything but the first one, I think, starts really, really like in, in the thick of things. And from start to finish, this book is a masterpiece. At no point in this book did it feel like it was slow. At no point did I feel like it was meandering. I didn't know what the point was from just the opening and this world that De Castell has created. It's so dangerous and so just filled with betrayal and corruption that every single character that you meet you, the tension never dies because you never know who you can trust and if you can trust them. And sometimes the people you think you can trust aren't the ones you can trust. And the ones that you don't think you can't trust are the ones you can trust. And it's just, it's like that all the time. So it's very, very stressful to live in Tristia. One thing that I think De Castell does better than any other author I've read is talk about the minutia and the, the, the real politic of governing a country. He talks about things that other books just don't talk about when it comes to leading armies, when it comes to political fallout, when it comes to how does the country work? How does war affect the common person? What are the 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 what are the inner workings of governing a country? What are the inner workings of moving an army from here to here? And I know that most people just kind of, most authors don't do that because it can seem boring. But here, De Castell never makes it seem boring, ever. It's always just fascinating because it makes everything so realistic and it makes every choice that the great coats make so real with real rippling trickle down repercussions. In Tyrant's Throne, we see a lot of how the great coats actions in those first three books in Falcio's desperation to follow King Palos' dream and put a lean on the throne, how that has affected the country as a whole. What, are, what repercussions have all of the, the, the deaths of the Duke, the people who have risen, even if it's not, even if it's not Falcio himself who's done it, the people who have risen against Falcio or against the great coats that, that Falcio has had to kind of put down, what kind of consequence has this had? I've never seen an author talk about how when a lord dies, how the people who take over that lord's lands, how lands are split up and how the treasury of that land is split up and how you, you satiate the soldiers that were serving that lord and, and which priests do you bribe because you always have to have, because if the church turns against you, the people turns against you. We see how a lot of people in the north hate the great coats because with the death of Patriana and the other Duke of the North in Trader's Blade, all of these peasants in the North haven't had, uh, they haven't had the, the, the Lords. And even though Patriana was just a horrible, horrible, conniving, manipulating, terrible, evil woman, she kept the lights on. She kept the food flowing. She kept order in the country. So yes, she was terrible. Yes, she was a tyrant, but the peasants were fed and they weren't starving and they had they had they had jobs 
And so Falcio and the Great Coats have to come face to face with these people who are starving and have to move and leave their homeland because they don't they don't have anyone taking care of them because the Great Coats have forcibly removed them. And even though, and guys, it just it just breaks my heart because everything that Falcio and the Great Coats have done has been the right thing. It has been righteous and it has been just and it has been following the law and enforcing the law and bringing down the bad guys. But, but. Who's better off for it? What has Falcio's quest to deliver the law, to, to, to administrate and, and administer the law, what good has it done anyone? And that kind of existential crisis is what Falcio's got to kind of deal with here. So in the, in the opening section of this book, there's a bunch of kind of like political intriguing. We see that uh, finally with everything done, like finally the Dukes are, are kind of ready to decide whether or not they're going to accede to Aline taking the throne. And this is, just, Falcio's just not good at this. He's just not good at politicking. We've seen this in the other books. They even tell him that this is the time for politics and not outraged idealism. And guys, <laughs> That struck me in the heart because I think in a lot of ways, like Falcio, I get can get filled with outraged idealism because I, like Falcio, see the world as it could be, not as it is. And, you know, I struggle with this too, just like Falcio does. And so he's kind of got to take a step back because it just doesn't suit him. He just gets angry. The, 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 the dealing and the kind of deals that these people have to make in order to effectively run a country, they just rub Falcio the wrong way. And even though he knows that it's best for the country, he just can't, he can't hold his nose. Like it, it's the room where it happens, like in Hamilton, hold your nose and close your eyes. He can't do it. He can't do it. As I said before, Falcio is a good man who does not consider what his goodness and what his righteousness is costing the country. Oof. Like, how, how do you come to grips with that? How do you just reconcile that when your righteousness is, it, you're, you, the fact that you're a good man is actually causing people harm? <sighs> Guys, the middle section of this book, the middle, and it's bizarre that it's the middle section. The middle 200 pages of this book are, they are some of the best I've ever read. They're so good, so good, so good. The plot twists abound. Oh, my heart broke multiple times. God, I, cry, I cried twice in a single lunch hour. There's so many things happening. So many like twists and turns. You think you know what's happening. No, you don't. You have no idea what this book is gonna do. You don't know the main conflict of this book. You think you do, no you don't. And then when you think you do, you don't know it again. I promise, you don't know. It's, oh my gosh, everything just turns and everything turns in a way that makes sense and seems and, and seems natural and, and organic and, ah. Oh, First of all, just let me say the villains in this one, the villains in this one, and commonly, most people didn't like the blacksmith as much as they liked uh, Shuren from book two, but here, the villains just outclass. The, the villains are fantastic. They're so good. They have motivations. It's almost, it's almost even hard to consider them the villain. It's just so, oh, it's so, so good. There are just so many brilliant themes. There are so many touching and heartbreaking and, and gut-wrenching relationship moments in this. We see, the, like, if you've been waiting, if you've been waiting for some, like, emotion from Kest, you're gonna get it in this one. There's just so much from so many people. We get Duke Gillard again, one of my favorite, if not my favorite character in the whole series besides Falcio. Day Castell, I, I've never seen anything done with with a character like Duke, Duke Gillard. It's it, it's absolutely fantastic. But there is so much in this about doing what is right versus doing what is easy. Do you do what it's right when, when, when it's hard? And, and we've seen the Falcio always chooses the right thing, uh, even, even when it's hard. But what if the right thing is not the thing he wants to do? Usually those things align, but what if they don't? What if those things don't? And as the back of the book says, when it comes to a decision between justice, which is doing what he knows to be right, and enforcing the law, which is what he has sworn to do, which one is gonna take precedent? Are you a magistrate 
or are you a righteous man? Which one is it, Falcio? Are, uh, are, are you a loyalist to the king? Are you going to try to fulfill the king's dream? Or are you going to adhere the laws that he swore you to uphold? When those come into conflict, what do you do? What can make someone sacrifice everything they've ever stood for? If it comes to that, what can make a man give up everything that's ever been important to him? It talks about the reason that lawmakers aren't the same as the governors. The people who enforce the law are not the same people as those who are making the law. When you have a judge sitting on the throne, he becomes a tyrant because then it's not enforcing the law. That person is now shaping the law to suit his own personal sense of justice. And so Falcio gets in kind of that same situation. Is it within Falcio's right to enforce his own brand of justice? Or is he bound by the oaths he took to enforce the law of the land? And it is De Castell, he, he navigates this with just brilliance. Guys, I cannot say enough about this book. I love this book so much. I really like that we're, where we see the, the the human cost of war, the, the cost of what it costs, what war costs regular citizens. It's it's really interesting. Uh, it's a really interesting comparison with the Poppy War, which shows like the real cost of of, of the armies, of the soldiers, of the military, like the cost of, of how terrified. Uh, soldiers are and how war isn't pretty and war isn't valiant. But here, De Castell shows what it costs the average citizen, what it costs the average commoner, the average peasant, what all of the, the war effort does to them. And it just, everything just gets kind of, all of the themes come back. Tyrant's Throne shows us the power of stories and we, we get to see more of the Bardati, which we've just been waiting to see what the Bardati's original purpose was. We learn the power of stories, the power of songs, the power of, of, of this kind of uh, uh, love of country, the power of a nation or a people's history, the power of faith and belief and the power of valor and courage and the power of honor and the power of the law. And, and all of these themes are just, are just so, they're, they're just so present and so rich and you just drink them in. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Like the story that De Castell has told from Trader's Blade on has just resonated so much with me. I wish I was a great coat. Like in a former life, I would have been a great coat. In a new life, I would be a great coat. I want to order a great coat right now and start an army of great coats. If you want to join me in my great coat revolution, let me know. And I, like I've already got some great coats in the Knights of Alexandria. I'm going to get y'all great coats too. And we can all have great coats and we can just be the freaking great coats because I love this series so much. For those of you who are worried that it's going to be kind of like, feel like a side quest and kind of meander, it doesn't. Everything is crisp. You always know what the point is. This is a tight, tight story. There's not a lot of extraneous stuff. Everything feels necessary. The relationship between Kest and Brasty and Falcio is here and in rare form form. Their dialogue is still there. It's still hilarious, but it's so touching between them. It's just, their relationship is so masterfully written and they're, we know them. We know we our friends are like that. It's, it's the friends who joke around and just try not to take things too seriously and have a hard time admitting how they really feel about each other. But when, when it comes to it, they will absolutely die for each other. We get even more about Valiana and more about Aline and Dariana and Athalia and all of these, all of these other people, including some other great coats. The character work is fantastic. The plotting is fantastic. The, the, it's just a, it's a roller coaster of emotions I felt reading this book. And the conclusion, you think that it's not, there are so many threads to wrap up. The conclusion is brilliant. It's so good and so earned and I didn't feel cheated by it and everything felt like it ended exactly where it needed to end. It was so, so good, so good. Guys, I love this series. I hope you do too. If you've read Tyrant's Throne, please don't talk in spoilers for anybody that hasn't read it, but talk to me down in the comments if you use spoiler tags, if you're gonna use spoilers. 
I love this series so much and it will always be near and dear to my heart. I'm so excited about the new uh, Great Coat series that's coming out in his website says February, but Amazon says June. So I don't know. I hope it's February called Play of Shadows where uh, the main character is the grandson of two Great Coats. I cannot wait to spend more time in this world. I will absolutely be prioritizing Spellslinger and his, uh, his YA series because Decastel is right up there in the top, top, top echelon of my favorite authors. So on the King Finn approval system, are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? On the King Finn approval system, I give this book an unheard of, the rarest of all ratings, a superb plus plus. What? Oh no! Oh! Oh! He came out with a superb plus plus! We've never seen that before! The crowd goes wild! Ah! Ah! I got a superb plus plus! That's how much I like this book, guys. Superb plus plus. I'd give out of, out of five stars, I'd give it five stars easily. If I could give it six stars, I would. I love this book so much. I love this series so much. I'm sad that I don't get any more time with, with Kest and Brasty and Falcio and, and the rest of them. I love all of the characters. It does say that the Great Coats will be back eventually, and I cannot wait for that time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sitting through all of my, my Great Coats love and my Great Coats uh, effusive praise. Even if Abby didn't like Trader's Blade, I know none of y'all like Trader's Blade. Like, I get it. I get it. Read Night Shadow. Read Night Shadow. If you don't like it after Night Shadow, you're not gonna like it. But I do want to say one thing. If you are concerned about kind of the graphic scenes that are in uh, the first book and the second book, those aren't in the third and fourth book. The, 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 the really graphic stuff is not in the second two books. And I would actually say that the fourth book is the least graphic of all four of them. So just in case you weren't aware. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. My Patreon and Discord links are both in the descriptions. Can't wait to continue with the next Great Coast series. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Thank you.